Take a look at these new pictures into us this morning as British Prime Minister Boris Johnson arrived in the United Arab Emirates. He's in the Middle East this week. He's searching for energy supplies to replace Russian oil and gas. Let's go to David Cochran in our bureau in London. We were talking about this yesterday, uh, the word that he was going. There he is now landing and beginning this trip. David, it's a controversial one. Tell us more. Yeah, Heather, it's a controversial trip, but one that Boris Johnson says is necessary if they're going to build this wide coalition to prevent Vladimir Putin from succeeding in Ukraine. And he's going to try to convince the Saudis in particular to boost oil production to help settle this global price shock that's happening absolutely everywhere, but also make it easier for countries to wean themselves from their dependence from Russian oil and gas. This is an issue in Europe in particular, and the criticism has been that if the West keeps buying energy from Russia, they are, in effect... Uh, financing the invasion of Ukraine and undoing some of the work that these sanctions and other economic measures seek to do. So Johnson's government has announced a ban on Russian oil by the end of the year, but he says in the short and the medium term, the only way other countries can follow that example is if they find alternate supply, and that's what this trip is about. Here's what he said before he got on that plane. We've got to get ourselves off Russian hydrocarbons. They're a massive part of the global market for hydrocarbons. They help to drive the price. Uh, we need to talk to other producers around the world about how we can move away from that dependency. Uh, Vladimir Putin over the last uh, years has been like a, a pusher uh, feeding an addiction uh, in uh, Western countries to his hydrocarbons, uh, to his oil and gas. Uh, we need to, to get ourselves off uh, that addiction. So that drug dealer comparison has certainly uh, caught some people's attention here in the UK, but there has been a lot of criticism, Heather, that, that Johnson would do this less than a week after Saudi Arabia executed 81 men. This happened on Saturday, or ex uh, executed on charges of terrorism and holding what the Saudis call deviant beliefs. He's also under pressure uh, to condemn this, and, and his office says he will raise it in his meetings. And Johnson's spokesperson says the prime minister will also ask the Saudis to condemn Russia's aggression in Ukraine. But there's this other criticism criticism too, Heather, because Johnson is going to be meeting with the Saudi Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman. Uh, he has been a pariah in the West, accused of ordering the 2018 murder of, of Washington Post journalist Jamal Khashoggi, a murder that Johnson himself described as a barbaric act that copied the playbook of Vladimir Putin. And yet, here we are. He, he's off to see the Crown Prince. So lots of criticism, lots of contradiction. Some of Johnson's own MP saying the timing of all of this sends a terrible message coming less than a week after those executions. The Labour leader Keir Starmer has accused Johnson of going cap in hand from dictator to dictator in search of energy. And underlying all of it, Heather, the projections here that oil, that gas could hit two and a half pounds a litre. That's four dollars and twenty cents Canadian, as you we were saying yesterday. So this is sort of domestic pressure that gets a prime minister on a plane. Indeed. The numbers are pretty striking, though, from the EU, David. 30% yeah. of oil imports are from Russia, more than 40% of total gas imports to the EU from Russia. It is a deep dependence, as you suggest. So how is Europe responding to Boris Johnson's moves? Right. So uh, Boris Johnson is talking to the Saudis. Europe is talking about subsidies. EU finance ministers, they met yesterday in Brussels and they've agreed to a couple of things. They're going to subsidize household fuel prices and they're going to help companies that are hit by surging energy prices. I mean, if you look at the Russian war against Ukraine, what it's doing, it's causing a price shock in a lot of key areas like gas and food. This is on top of the high inflation that the world has been dealing with coming out of COVID. So the EU is trying to come up with a plan to deal with that and try to free itself from its dependency on Russia. As you said, it's about 45% of gas, 30% of oil, and more than half of it's coal. So those numbers just tell you precisely why Europe can't immediately block uh, Russian energy imports the way Canada and the U.S. are doing and the way uh, the U.K. is promising to do. So the talk in Europe is to speed up investment, diversify supply, diversify the green transformation. None of that, though, is cheap. None of that is immediate. None of that will happen quickly. And until then, Heather, Europe is going to keep buying energy. Uh, from a country that has plunged the continent into its most significant crisis since World War II. David, thank you. Part of our coverage this morning of Day 21, Russia's war on Ukraine. David Cochran there in London.